I guess we'll get started. Good afternoon, everybody. If you don't know who I am, I'm Matt Baylor, and I manage the extensions directory along with some of these other goofballs <laughs> in front of me. Um, today's session, there's no PowerPoint slide presentation. It's kind of wing it. Just show you how when you submit an extension, where does it go from when you hit submit? And a few other things of what we're going to have planned down the road in the next few months, I'm going to cover as well. So. When you submit an extension, if you log in, is it talking loud enough? Can you guys hear him in the no, back? No. <laughs> so, as you can see, we're still on a 1.5 site that's really ugly, <laughs> to say the least. But it, it works for, for what it, it's needed for. Um, at any time, there's usually about 200, 250 pending listings. And most of those are submissions that were made and sit with p errors because a developer didn't read the documentation and missed a lot, a lot of requirements. And you can see these are all pending. And there's lots more. So you submit a listing, and it gets thrown into this queue. All the red ones are waiting fixes from developers. But we will look at JibJab. So how does it work? It gets put in this queue, and then as, as one of the team members have time, we'll go in there and we'll screen your submissions and check for everything. But in cases like this, when we don't like you, reject, next. Which one? There we go. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Listings. And who submitted that extension? Uh, this one Ni Nicholas submitted. Your submission? Jib jab, which was a fork of what nothing, <laughs> but we'll just throw that one away. So why reject that? Because we don't like Nick. Okay. <laughs> so, so we go to the next one. <laughs> Not enough bribes offered. <laughs> he doesn't pay enough. 
But in, in all seriousness, though, it's it's not a quick process. The first thing we do is we check the, the name field and make sure it doesn't conflict with any other names in the directory. Then we'll lock the name. Then we'll go th down through and we'll read the description, make sure it's not anything that violates our terms. No. Then we will download the extension, and then we will run it through the JED checker, which checks for all the common requirements. And most developers don't even use that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the JET checker checks for all the common requirements like uh, GPL header notices and all the PHP headers, JEXEC or die lines. Um, it checks for base64 code because we don't allow encoded backlinks. Um, it checks for the license in the XML install file and it also checks the install name because the name has to match the listing name. Not anymore because we removed that requirement. <laughs> so you run the jet checker and it'll point out a few things. Um, it shows you here that all the GPL notices are in the PHP files. Uh, it shows you what the some info about the XML install file and what it installs as. So we look at the install name. We go back. We make sure it matches the listing name. Oops, which it does. So we're good so far. So we press on and we'll check to make sure that the links work. Good there, the download link. And we have a download link. So now we make sure it installs and uninstalls on all the versions that you, whoever submitted, says it works on. So we bounce back over to our 2.5 install. We install it. We really don't care about functionality. We just want to make sure it installs and uninstalls. If it doesn't function, that's kind of your problem. <laughs> you can take the bad reviews. There it installs. Now we'll make sure it uninstalls. Manage. So we're good for 2.5. Now we try on 3.0 or 3.1. Components install. Now this is just a module, so it's kind of quick. I mean, some extensions are pretty big. They have multiple plugins and modules, so it takes quite a bit more time. And for those of the team members that haven't been doing it for very long, it takes a lot more time. But I've been doing this for, what, three years now? When you go through hundreds of listings in a weekend, it's kind of just repetitious. Blazing speed internet. <coughs> May I ask you a question, one other 
Yes, please. It depends on the, is it, is it one extension, like is it one like package extension? Like is it one application? So you would install a package, let's say, and that actually goes through the manifest and installs a system, installs components, maybe a couple plugins, modules, whatever. Um, is a package file and a submission like that preferred? Yes. components and additional? Yes. Okay. And we won't, like it, a lot of people like to, create like say a Facebook group of like uh, you know Facebook login Facebook feed Facebook friends and they like to bundle those all together as in one file but then they come and they want to list each one individually which we won't allow it's one listing you know if you're gonna distribute it as a package you, you list it as a package and not flood the directory with excess links okay so we passed the installation there now we'll make sure it uninstalls. You'd be surprised how many <coughs> extensions don't uninstall. Or install. Or install, <laughs> yes. All right, so we're good. We go back to the listing page. So many tabs open. Oops. And we will hit approve. We'll note when we approved it. If we can learn how to type. And we'll go to the next one. Now you can look at the new. And there it is. Oh. <laughs> so that that's basically the process for us. And a module is, is pretty easy to do, it's pretty quick. And because I've been doing it a lot, I can zip through them pretty quickly, but I don't have all the time in the world to sit and process extensions all day long. So we have to rely on some of these other fine folks, which have been doing a great job as of late of keep trying to keep up. Um, on average, we probably we have about 230 pending listings. Probably around 20 of them are waiting for us for initial screening. Um, usually about 150 of them are pending the developer to fix them because they were flagged with errors and the rest are waiting for us to take a second or third look at. So it can be a daunting process for five people. Um, if you don't fix your submission within 60 days, it gets just flat out rejected. Or if you submit the same problem Multiple, three times, it gets rejected. <laughs> because if we figure, yeah, we figure if we tell you, hey, you're missing GPL notices in all your PHP headers, and if you can't get it right the third time, th everybody else in line shouldn't have to wait on you. You know, you can try again, and move to the back of the line. Is there any limit on how long it takes to No, no, you can submit as soon as you see it's removed. So that's pretty much the submission process. And put in the limit on how many they can have. Oh. We, right now we have a pending submission of three per person because you see like a lot of uh, developers, they seem to, I don't even <laughs> know how they do this, but they'll just arrive, like show up at the door with like 50 extensions and dump them in in one day and they all have the same errors, you know, so 
we, we limit to three submissions per user. And then if those three are good and you have a bunch more, you can just open up a ticket and say, hey, I have a bunch of listings that I want to submit at one time. And if those three were OK, initially, we'll say, go ahead, and we'll just knock those out right away. So what's in the future for the extensions directory? We are completely rewriting everything that handles listings and users. We have, over the past, what, six months, yeah. past year, mm -hmm. have been putting together a functional design document which outlines everything we want our custom extension to do. And you want to publish the thing? Right now, we're, we are seeking feedback on the design document. And then we'll make some adjustments based on feedback from everybody. And then we will put this out for a request for a proposal to have somebody create it for us. Um, in the past, uh, just about all the Joomla projects, everything was done by volunteers. And that's great, but there's a lot of limitations in there. I mean, you, you have to rely on somebody to volunteer. You have to rely on that person to stick around and help you. You have to you know, give that person credit and footer links and whatnot. And you really, don't, you really can't set a timeline, you know, if, if, if Beats volunteering to do something for us. We can't say, hey, we need this by next week and expect you to do it by next week. So we decided we're going to put out a request for a proposal and we're just going to pay for it. We're going to get what we want, get it done right the first time, and move forward. Um, so the request for the functional design document should be in a blog post published. just published. You can review it and make comments in the forum. And we'll take those comments and make our adjustments to the design document and move forward from there. And we're, we're really pushing for a lot of process changes with this upgrade. We want to automate the submission process completely so it doesn't require somebody to be on the other end constantly screening your submissions. So the idea is you submit your extension and you can't get past you can't get to the finish line unless everything's right. It'll check it itself, and then it's on the developer to fix their extension before they can dump it in a queue and wait for somebody else. It's going to, to start, it's going to use the jet checker. We're going to build that into, we're going to build Daniel's jet checker. Where's he at? Oh, right there. We're going to build that into it. And then we're looking at other code screening testing functionality to add after the fact. The, what Sander brought up a few days ago about adding, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I will not say the name that yet, but like a tool that's not only doing some um, checks for the Juma rules, but also for uh, some basic uh, vulnerability checks. So we just need to make sure that there are uh, no security issues that are really of interest in there. Uh, because nowadays, yeah, the, the jet team is uh, looking through the files some, uh, some of the days, but yeah, it's really hard to really go through everything in detail. So this tool will really automate it, uh, the whole thing and will be uh, tailored to the Joomla needs of the Joomla uh, general coding standard, etc. Uh, so the idea is to, to really have that, like you submit something, when it's not passing through that check, you can't continue submitting it, and you have to fix it first, and not only get a message like you have to fix it, but also these will be for like, these are the issues uh, that needs to be addressed and solved before we will uh, allow you on the Joomla extension directory. And hopefully that makes issues we have now with a lot of extensions. I mean, Juma can be very safe, but uh, as long as we have a lot of extensions with security issues, we always get the name of hacked websites. So we would, uh, would love to see that improved and uh, the extension will get a few higher standards as well. Exact 
same test suite as the whole test suite, which would involve separate, not separately, but you know, first speed up and doing the actual like vision process. But yeah. you don't get touched by, by support order to find and I, I get back into the team. And I, so the latest of the suite would be easier to just get back into the, into the team process if you want to like get it just the test suite. Yeah. Uh, I agree. You can't, the idea is you can't get the submission through if you don't pass those tests. No, because yeah, you want to yeah, yeah, check before that, if it's. Yeah, but so you, s you will stay in that submission form, so it's not that you will, like now yeah, you will okay. be notified later. Okay. No. Yeah, okay. uh, any other questions? Somebody? Yes. Um, part part of the 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 three point oh design specs specifications, we are dropping a lot of categories, mm -hmm. and we're going to drop the extension specific categories, and kind of link those right to, like say community builder, you, you'll see a button for list all the extension specifics for this, and it'll just list them all. Um, what, we, yeah, yeah, they'll still be in the main category. Yeah, now it's quite difficult to find some of them because when you look at the main category, you're not going to see any plugins there. It, it's difficult to find anything, honestly. The, the search is way past due for an overhaul. And with getting rid of a lot of the sub, sub, sub categories, because we have a lot of categories like jQuery or image slider with jQuery, image slider with flash. Why do we need separate separate uh, categories for what what the component or what the extension's using? So we're going to drop a lot of those subcategories and we're going to add tags. So you can have just one j or just one image slider category and you can tag it with jQuery, tag it with flash or tag it with another category. Yes, multiple tags, yes. It's going to be single ta single categories, but you can tag other categories. Is that how we... Pretty much, pretty much. Anything else? Yes? We haven't really gotten to that point, but the goal is to be able to easily retool it for the other Joomla directories if they want to use it. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Multi-language is in the doc. Yes. Um, no, go ahead. Well, there's, well, there's many pieces. Uh, and you have the comments, you have the reviews, and you have the main language. Yeah, it's so the idea is now to make the main website in multiple languages. Give the uh, people who can read you uh, uh, installed language in which they can put their reviews. And to give the developers the installed languages as. Um, where they can put other languages in. 
So uh, what languages that will be, and we haven't decided yet, but... Uh, they will also be based on the community, uh, of course. Like, the, 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 the Yak or system text will be by default available in multiple languages, and then it's in, like, a description in different languages as a developer in other languages as well. So, and there are more details in the document as well, but uh, the idea is to have it in there on the side. Because we know that like the Latin and French and other kinds of uh, big local words and things like that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anything else? No other questions. Crickets. That's all good. Also, if we uh, publish a draft of the terms of, terms of service rewrite that we're seeking comments on, you can find that in the Joomla blog in uh, our section of the forum. If you want to make some comments, we've really scaled it back and cut out a lot of the excess language and some of the rules that are just common sense. So. If you'd like to take a look at that, it's on uh, on the blog. I guess that's it. If no one else has any more questions. Um, but there, that's still in talks. <laughs> We're still trying to figure that one out. But you, you'll hear more about that in the next few months, I'm sure. Well, you can say maybe a little bit, which is interesting, or maybe Peter, you should tell about the, the thing we want in there about the XML update. Oh, the one, one, another big change is uh, for updating your listings. We want functionality that you can provide a link to an XML file where you can just update your information remotely and it will update your listing pages on a daily basis. <laughs> really, that's all it took? That's all it took, really? <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're, also, we're also automating things like link checking. You know, if you, you have a bad link, it's going to check links once a day. If you have a bad link, it's going to send you a notice saying, hey, you have a bad link, check it. And if you don't, and if it's still bad the next time it checks, it'll unpublish it. So we don't have to deal with reports about, hey, this link's bad. And then when we check it, it's still bad. And it just happens to be because you're moving your server somewhere. At least if you have a 24 hour window, it won't get unpublished right away. The listing. Yeah, if, if you get to the point where it, it's unpublished for, the, for a bad link, next time it checks and it notices, it, hey, I fi you fixed it, it'll republish it itself. I'm thinking about the demo link with the optional. Typically, demo link. The oh, the, the, the optional links? No. It, if, probably if, if a, the optional links are bad, it'll just wipe them out. Yeah, yeah, it'll just wipe it out. Those are two of the bigger changes. The reports, all the reports, right now currently you submit a report or somebody submits a report against an extension or a review, it goes to a queue and we deal with it and you never hear back from it. We want to integrate that into the ticket system. So you submit a report, it opens a ticket and then you see what happens. So. That's about it. Also, the uh, re uh, review system, do you have any questions for that? We kind of covered that last time. Yeah. Well, everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a link for it. Yeah. If you want to see the review system we touched on at uh, the Joomla World Conference, and you can find that video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's completely overhauling the review system.
and making it a little more robust and more on point. So it's a lot of changes at one time, but I think we're way past the need for change. That's all I got.